God created humans for relationship, and then God created relationships for connection. That's what he did. So when God set up an, up, up an earth, if you believe in God, if God set up and he thought about us, he said, okay, I'm going re- to have them have a relationship, and I want them to connect with one another because I'm relational. So I want them to have a relationship with me and with one another. So the takeaway was God is relational and made humans for relationship. So we can connect with God and one another through relationship. So we connect with God and one another through relationship. You got it? You got it? And then we talked last week about God's triangular relationship. When God's at the apex of everybody's relationship, it'll, it'll work out. We said the first thing is love matters most because God is love, all right? You see that picture? So God is love matters most. So God is love. So God's in heaven. Just picture this, picture this man. God's in heaven. And he's creating it. Man, if you, this is what I believe because the Bible says God's in heaven and he says God's nature is love. So, man, God says, I'm going to create relationships. So, which, what do you think the centerpiece would be that relationship? Love. Because I'm love. So, God is in this whole ma- magnificent mindset, Martha, was thinking like, I'm going to create a love relationship. So, that tells me the foundation of every relationship should be based upon love. Amen. Love that we get from God. All right? You got it? So, it's this g- love thing going on between us and God. You got it? And then the scripture said to love God first. To reciprocate God's love for you, you should reciprocate it back to him. Okay? God so loved the world. Say, oh, my God, God so loved me. Now I'm going to reciprocate that love back to him. You got it? So you love God first. So if Nisha is loving God first, man, I'm, I'm in on the good. Because she's going to reciprocate God's love that God's given her. I'm going to be a recipient of that love. Think about it. most times y- you, if you have sour relationships, most people that come in and talk about their relationships is, hey, Pastor, I, I, I didn't come from a, rela- uh, a loving family. And so they don't come from a re- loving family. Guess what they cannot reciprocate to other people? Love. love. So what God says, the first thing they need some love, they need some my love so they can reciprocate that love. The true affirmation or confirmation that you are Christ follower is that you love. Because God is giving you so much love, it's so overwhelming, you just got to give it to somebody. You know, you just got to spread it around. You, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you're getting forgiveness every day, you just got to give some too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You get mercy every day, you got to give some mercy too. Because you're receiving this flow of, from God, and you're loving him first, and then it says, love one another second. So the takeaway from all this was God's desire. For relationship comes from his divine nature of love. God demonstrated his love for us through Jesus Christ. So we can what? Reciprocate that love back to God in worship and with one another in fellowship. I mean, we don't worship one another. We in fellowship one another, or joint participation, all right? Koinonia. True fellowship is not, we fellowship and meaning, we usually use fellowship is that we're over each other's house eating. That's not, that's. No, koinonia means we are joint participators. We, are, we joint share with one another life. Right. And we are flowing love to love. Man, can you see it? We're loving God first. Man, I'm talking to you. I'm coming in. You guys are thinking this, right? You're thinking no evil toward me because, man, I know pastor is th- loving God first. And everything flowing from pastor is love for me. Amen. Right? And I'm thinking back to you. When I see you, man, I know you fl- love is flowing from you. I know you will do me no ill, no harm, no hurt. You, you know, you won't get on the phone and talk about me or nothing like that, man, because the love of God is flowing from you, man. And the, and the, and the people in the, in the world just amazed at how Christ followers have their relationship. They want in on some of this, man, because those people are just unique kind of people, man. They love the people as they love themselves. I mean, they just, they, 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 no, they just that's just what we are. That's how we are. And, and if we're not like that, we're going to get like that, right? We're going to be a relational church flowing from love to love to one another. Because the world is looking for what? Connection. That's it. And the connection is they're looking for relationship. They're looking for what? Genuine relationship. All right? You got it? Amen. So we have the key what the world is looking for. And God wants to use relationships to do that. It says, a new commandment I give you. Love one another. This is how we're going to do it. As I have loved you. So you must. You didn't give me, they didn't give me no option. You said, I must love one another. By this, all men will know. That you are my disciples if you love one another. The command is love one another. The act of the will, not the emotion. The application is how? 
as I have loved you. So, man, we're flowing breast to breast. We're flowing. We're giving Christ love to one another. Awesome. Awesome, man. Why? So we can be a witness to the, to the world that we're following Christ. The world don't know love until, they, they, t- until we demonstrate love. The world doesn't know relationship because they don't have God. So we have to show the world how relationship God and God intended to, for us to have. We d- demonstrate to the world how that looks. We show the world what friendship looks. We are supposed to lead and not follow. We're supposed to show them, man. And sometimes, you know, and, and it's, if, it's, it's what we really show the world about relationships is when we get in difficult relationships. What are they going to do now? What are they going to do now? We're going to show you what we're going to do in difficult relationships. We're going to come out on the other side with peace. That's what we're going to do. We're going to show you how it works in difficult relationships. The dynamics of uh, then is there there's a thing we come in, in the body of Christ, okay? And we said in Christ relationships, the thing that connects us all here together is Christ. So we came here for Pastor Keith. This is not no concert. Like if you went to a concert, you come, you're going there for Jay Z. You know, no, you're coming here for Christ. You ain't coming here for Pastor Keith. Amen. I know church, some churches build up the pastor. Coming here to pastor. No, we are supposed to come here for Christ. Amen. The thing that connects us is Christ. Amen. The thing that's going to divide us is us. Right. <laughs> Let's say it again. The thing that connects us is what? We fall out when we find out about us. Never forget how we got connected. We got connected on Christ. We didn't get connected on because I'm black. Or I'm a Democrat. Okay, you got it? Rich, poor, whatever, we don't connect like that. Right? We don't connect on groupies. Right? We connect on Christ. So if you're poor... You in Christ, you with me. Amen. You're black, you in Christ, you with me. You're Republican, you in Christ, you with me. You're a Democrat, you in Christ, you with me. Christ brings us together. Everything else divides us. Amen. That's right. Everything else is going to divide us. Amen. Anything in the church that divides, ain't nobody going to follow over Christ. I can talk to two Christ followers. They say, you follow Christ? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, but I, ain't, gonna, I ain't voting that way. See, then they start to get the fussle. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes people ask me, they say, Pastor Keith, Pastor Keith. You know, they're going to they gonna fall out. They're going to they they get out of Christ. They're going to start talking to me. Pastor Keith, why come you're not more social? Why don't you more right. activists and find out the social issues of the, you know, you know. And I, I said, first of all, you got to know your call. I'm not a social activist. I'm a pastor. Secondly, I talk social issues every Sunday. The world does not love any, each other, right? So when I talk about, I'm talking about social issues right now. Love one another. I'm helping the social issue. If I say you need to get married before you have babies, I'm helping the social issue. If I say I'm teaching marriage and the crisis in the world is divorce, I'm teaching social issues. The social issue, the culture just don't want to listen to my message. But I'm talking social issues every Sunday. You worried about STD? Guess what? We have this thing called abstinence. Am I helping social issues? But they don't want to do it. But I'm talking social issues every Sunday. If I say, listen, these are the qualifications of a leader, then just use those qualifications and you go out there and pick. Did I just tell you, I didn't tell you who to vote for, but I told you what a leader should have, right? Did I talk politics? Yes. But I didn't say politics. So people miss it, man. Christ follows listen. We talk social issues every Sunday, but people don't want to hear it. Not in the world. That's why they always come in. They, they, Martha, they always say, hey, Pastor, can you come on and sit on this panel? I say, no, y'all, y'all don't want to hear it. I don't, hear, I don't get around no table talking about social issues, talking about issues, and then we get done, we ain't, we ain't going to do nothing. I don't want to hear all that. Yeah, yeah. What are we going to do? And then if I go up there talking about abstinence, oh, you know that ain't possible. But then don't, you, you, don't want me, you don't want me sitting down with you. No, no, really. No, why, why, you, why you call me? I won't tell you biblical, right? If you don't want to hear that, then no. Then, then, but we got the solution. Anytime you want to hear it, now just call me up and I'll help y'all out. Right. Now, how you going to have a pastor on the panel? I ain't going to talk to God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you have, I, oh, I said, I, and I went through the whole thing. They said, now, do you have anything? I said, no. Nah. Like, like they said, can you lighten that down a little bit? You know what I'm saying? You know, if I, if I say uh, 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 in there, see, I, I don't try to be a victim. I try to be a victor, right? So I want to talk about the victimization of, of the black uh, community. I want to talk about victors, how we can get victory, right? right. 
Well, the, the first thing that we can overcome in the black community is the absence of men in the neighborhood, right? The absence of men in the neighborhood is because nobody's getting married. You put men back in the neighborhood, gangs get out, that thing go up, right? So we got to get married. To, see, that that's simple. That's simple. It won't cost, cost government no money. Just get people married, and guess what? Everybody getting off welfare because the men going to work and everybody. See, I'm, I'm fixing it right now, baby. I'm fixing it. Vote for me. I'll set you free. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm fixing the issue right there, man. I'm fixing it right there. Right? No, any, listen, any community, take it to fact, listen to me. Any community that have men in that community, you will see no gain. There ain't no men gonna let no gang come up and shoot all up in there. No, no, no. That ain't, that ain't happening. All right? It's women in the community not covered by men and their children are getting shot. You put men in that community, that shooting stops. That's my social thing for the day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now listen, then we said horizontal relationships without God goes into conflict. So conflict restrictions, all right? Then we said you cannot pray for forgiveness if you're in conflict with, with the Christians, all right? And you cannot give your tithes and offerings if you're in conflict. And then we said you can't take communion if you're in conflict. So guess what? You need to pursue peace and, and uh, conflict resolution, all right? So again, that's what we're going to start talking about, right, today. Pursue peace and conflict with resolution. So think about anybody you're mad at. We're going to pursue peace and we're going to do some conflict resolution this morning. Got it? So we said, do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. So I'm going to do all I can. Nietzsche, you're getting on my last nerve, but I'm going to do all I can to live in peace with you. All right? And I'm going to work at living in peace with you. Got it? With everyone. Please. Nietzsche, please. Put your shoes up. i got to live in peace with you. I want to take communion, but you're teeing me up. <laughs> That's why, you know, she on this tenure. Hey, listen, I, I am, I am, I'm going to be shoe free. <laughs> I ain't got to turn the lights on. I can get to the bed without falling over something. It, 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 you know, now I'm going to miss my baby, but it, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. <laughs> you know, we, you know, but that, that's day, hey, man. You got a conflict, man, right? Now, listen, all relationships are founded upon love. You got it? All relationships are founded upon love. But all relationships grow based upon these points, beliefs, purpose, and expectations, boundaries, limitations, and liberties. What's the boundary of a relationship going to be? And the behavior, how you're going to treat me. So you look at anything's going to fall out. It's going to be based on your beliefs, your expectations. We was friends, and I expected you. It's going to be expectations. Just listen to the conversation. You'll hear expectations. Their beliefs and expectations of this relationship, you should have did this. You should be doing that. You're going to have conflict if expectations are not met and the purpose of the relationship is not met. You got it? Then boundaries. Every God gave us boundaries. He said, now you should eat, you can eat everything. That's liberty, but don't do this. That's a limitation. Every relationship has boundaries. You get married, what you, what you can't do? Huh? You, yeah, you can't commit infidelity, right? Because you got a boundary. You got it? You got it? So every relationship has boundaries. You get friendships, you can't be talking about your friends, talking about this is my friend, but I'm talking about them. You know, you can't, you can't do that. That's, that's, right? You, you, you got outside the boundaries. Right? Come on, talk back, come on. I'm just saying, I'm just trying to get help you locate your, your situation, your issues, that, and then there's behavior. How are you going to treat me? He said, man, listen, you need to get about of that, that situation. If people treat me like that, you know, somebody, some man abuses you. He said, no, you, no, no, God called you to peace. So peace and love go together. You ain't getting no peace. God said, get up out of that. Okay? You got it? If they don't want to live peacefully, then you got to get up out of it. Now, listen. Offenses. What is an offense? What, what happens when you offend me? I offend people all the time. Sometimes people get mad. They don't come to me. I can, I can offend people, and they think I'm a misogy misogynist. I can sit there and say, I'm, I'm joking, but I can just agitate people. Get, people get offended. And, I, you know, and the bad thing about it is you just feel it, feel it but you don't, they don't say nothing. You know, right? I can say, you know, women don't cook around here, right? I just offended somebody, right? I just offended them. Yes, I, I cook, Pastor. I'll be late after, after service. I cook, Pastor. I was, I was just joking. <laughs> right? But, but, but they want to know. You, you know what I'm saying? If I sit there and say, you know, yeah, we know, yeah, you, know you, you know how you women. See, men take it. Men, men are a whole different species. See, I just offended people right there. Men ain't all that, you see. No, I'm just showing you how you get offended very easy. How I am, I am very vulnerable because I'm running my mouth. 
how I can offend somebody very easily and not mend the fender. Right? So you have to give me, you have to give me some kind of space to say, okay, pastor loves me. He, you know, I don't like the way he said it, but that's all good. His intent is good. Amen. You see what I'm saying? He's not a misogynist, okay, kind of individual. All right? So, but I can use analogies. I say, women, y'all know how y'all roll y'all. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I offended you. You got it? So it's very easy to offend people here up on this pulpit uh, about something, all right? So don't get offended, why? Because that's what the, that's what the, uh, the enemy would want you to do is to, to get offended so you don't want to listen to me no more. Ah, uh, you just offended me. I'm just shut up. I'm shutting down. I ain't listening to nothing you got to say now. Yeah, don't, don't get offended, okay? You got it? But offense is this. Anyone who transgresses a belief, a boundary, or a behavior you live by, their offenses make you angry and resentful toward them, all right? So you can offend people. Like, you ain't talking to me like that. Now, let me give you two, and I always give a little excerpt because I'm trying to get y'all, y'all hot for the, for the book, right, in uh, theology. So I'll give you two tips from theology that are going to help you in relationships, right, especially if you're dating, all right? First of all, never make someone your priority when they have made you their option. <laughs> never, never make someone, all right, they're, you know, you, you call them, you're ready. They, you, you, you know, you, they call you, you, you're ready. You call them, they say, I, I, I can't get to there today. Never make someone your option, I mean, your, your, um, your priority, and they have made you an option. It's going to be in the book, it's hot, it's hot. <laughs> just that, you can just tell on the phone. Every time you're ready, when they call, well, when you call, they got something to do. <laughs> you're an option, okay, when, if they're bored, they ain't got nothing to do that day, then they okay, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> All right? So relationship starts out bad. Don't be needy. You got it? Well, the book says don't go out there if you need it anyway, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> All right? But that's, that's, a, that's a relational tip. All right? The next one is this. That some of you have done it, and you didn't know you did it. Know the difference between a choice you've made and a vow you've kept. Now, what's the difference? A choice can be changed. A vow comes from the spirit. A choice comes from the mind. So if you grew up in a home and you saw a uh, dysfunctional relationship. You say, I'll never let a man do that to me. You just made a vow in your spirit. And you worship that, that, that statement that you made. And any time a man looked like your daddy, you, you attack him then because you made a vow. And it's hard to change a vow. It's easier to change making a choice. So some of you have made vows. And the man is just as innocent. And you just, soon, you, soon they do something to you, it looks like something. Because well, hey! you made a vow. Ain't nobody going to. you living on vow. A choice, you say, I'm not going to allow that to happen to me. I'm going to work things through. See, it's changeable. It's mine. Vow. So somebody said, you don't, you don't tell somebody, I just love you. Oh, my God. You're making a vow. That's why vows are made during what? Marriage ceremony. You only make vows when you make covenant. But you're making vows with somebody, oh, you ain't even married to them. You know, you're making a vow to them, they ain't, they ain't said they want to marry you. And it comes in your spirit. When you're dating someone, and the, I'm trying to help y'all because y'all ain't read the book, so some of y'all dating somebody, right? And you're making choices, right? Make a choice, don't make a vow. Because you can, fl- you can flip on them real easy with a choice. They act up, say, see you later. But if you make a vow, ah, I, I, I got to have it. Oh, that's, my, that's mine. You see, you're making a vow. And it's sitting in your spirit. You're making a vow. And you're covenant with them before they even ask for the covenant. That's why it's hard to get them out of you. Understand how to make a choice. And, and what the difference is when you make a vow. That's just a racial tip. Book coming soon. <laughs> now, relational conflicts. First of all, you can have them in marital. But if the husband or wife who isn't a believer insists on leaving, let them go. See, let them go. Don't fight them. Bye. <laughs> in such cases, the what? The believer and the husband or wife is in no longer bond to, bound to that other. For God has called you to live in what? Peace. Peace. Racial. We have racial divisions, all right? But as the believers rapidly multiplied, there were rumblings of discontent. The Greek-speaking believers complained about the Hebrews. You see, back in the beginning of the church had racial stuff. Speaking believers saying their widows were being discriminated in the in the daily distribution of food. So you have you have conflicts. I'm just showing some different conflicts that's in the Bible. 
ministry. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Paul, with them. But Paul did not think it was wise to take him because he had deserted them in Paphila and had not continued with them in the work. So Paul said, no, 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 Mark, no, no, Mark, Mark, no. They had such a sharp disagreement, two people following Christ, you got it, so it happened, that they parted what? Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and left uh, committed by the believers to the grace of the Lord. Now look at this. Next group says this, only Luke is with me. Then this is Paul talking. He says what? Get Mark. They reconciled. Later on, they reconciled it. They came to peace. He says, look, look, look what he says. And bring him with you because he is what? Helpful to me. Back when we saw him in Acts, he hung on. So something happened. Between time, they got it back together. Sonny. Now some of us, we all in trouble on this one here. Let's all read this together. We all in trouble here. I meant that you are not to associate anyone who claims to be a believer yet indulges in sexual sin or is greedy or worship idols or is abusive or is a drunkard or cheats people. Don't even eat with such a person. And I know we don't do that one. But uh, that's what it says. It says, man, if, you, if you're a follower and, you, and, you, and you're single and you're fornicating, I ain't supposed to, hey, hey, no, no, but you got, you, if you ain't repenting, I ain't supposed to be with you. If you're a follower and you're getting drunk and all that kind of stuff, hey, because you're the body of Christ. I ain't supposed to be, uh-uh, no. See, we don't do a lot of stuff. We, we, see, that's, we don't do a lot of stuff that's in this Bible. We don't enforce a lot of stuff in this Bible. A little quiet in the house, I guess. Uh, <laughs> right? Now, let's get to it. How to handle conflict, all right? I just, just showed you some scriptures that talks about how conflicts can happen, right? You got it? And these are talking about people who don't want to repent. When, it, when it's Paul talking about people who just want to say, I'm, a, I'm a, you know, huh, I'm shacking up, talking about being a Christ follower. No, you can't be shacking up being a Christ follower. No. Not Christ, you can't do that. Get married. How to handle conflict. Point one. Never take revenge. Because that's what we want to do, right? Let's read it together. Dear friends. Never take revenge. Do what? Lead that to what? Anger of God. For what? The scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. So all you, all you have to do is say, ah, oh, ooh, God going to get you. Has you ever grown up and say that? Ooh, God going to get you. God going to fight my battle. I ain't got to fight you. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got somebody, you know, he made my blood pressure go up. No, no, I ain't got to do all that. If I take revenge, then God said, I can't take it. If you get in the way, I can't take it. So I'll take care of that. Then he said, do this instead. If your enemies are hungry, do what? If they are thirsty, do what? Don't put nothing in the drink, just give them something to drink. <laughs> you know, some, you know, I... In doing this, what are you doing? You're burning coals of shame on their head. See, we think it's ne negative. No, it's positive. They used to use burning coals to see in the, at nighttime the light. So he said, it's a shame because what you're doing, you're helping someone get on their journey that they cannot see. So you're helping them by putting that on their head. So every time you do good to somebody, he said, you're helping them see in their shame. So every time you're nice to your enemy, you're heaping coals or you're helping them see in their shame. And every time one of the coworkers doing you wrong and you're doing them nice and you're going to bring them lunch and they talk about you like a dog. Just find out somebody talking about, somebody on the job talking about like you like a dog. I mean, just talking like you ain't just, you a step up here. Just talking about you, right? Go bring them lunch. <laughs> and, and all the people in the coworkers are seeing them talk about you, right? They sitting there going like, mm, and, and they eat it. Right? Now, now, how they look? Every time you think about it, you say, man, I got this extra guest card. Can, do you want, can you, here, I, I was thinking about you. Don't, let me, why? Let, let's look at the reason. Why, why, 
do that. Because it says, don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Don't let their evil get in you. Don't go tit for tat. Don't, don't become them. You keep, you, you make, listen, if you start acting like them, they're controlling you. Amen. Don't do that. Amen. It ain't going to help no way. Right. So be nice. Amen. And then let God go and take care of that situation. Amen? Amen? Because he can judge rightly. And then we says, use biblical resolutions. Now, it's long, let's read it together. If, anyone, any, if another believer, got that? Yep. Sins against you, what do you do? How you go? And point out the offense. If the up, listen, if I offend you by something I said, you go privately. You ain't got to tell the neighbor. You ain't got to tell everybody. Come to me. All right, we can straighten this thing out. If the other person listens, again, then what? And confesses it, you have won that person back. But if you are unsuccessful, do what? Take one or two others with you and go back to them. Don't take your friends. Go get some, here, go to elders. Don't, 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 don't get your buddies. All right. <laughs> so that everything you may say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. Right. Keep reading. It was if the person still refuses to listen, take your case to the church. Then if he or she won't accept the church decision, treat that. Listen, to, listen to what I'm saying. See, see there's a, there, there can be a fallout in a relationship. Look, look what it says. Look what it says. Person has a pagan or a corrupt tax collector. Those are bad things those days. All right. I tell you the truth, whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Now, let's go through this. First step is private meeting. You do a private meeting. You contain the fallout. You don't spread it in the body. You contain it. What does it say? If anyone believers sin against you, you what? Go privately. So I'm sitting here, and I say something. And I offend you, right? You don't turn around. He just, he just made me see. You see now you didn't get you the one. You go, mm-hmm. You're going to see me out your face. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You keep it to yourself. You got it? You don't need to get your little bands on. You don't need to get the little group. You, no. Now you're out of order then. You got it? This is how Christians handle it, okay? I know it's too hot to hold by yourself, but that's why you go give it to the person. Who did it to you? Listen, if I offend you, person next you can't fix it. So, and to point out the offense, point it out. If the other person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. Listen, you know, I, I talk, there's nothing too small. Don't be embarrassed by, by, by it. By it. I, I, listen, if it's important to you, it becomes important to me. That's a relationship. I may in my head never tell you that I think that's stupid. But if it's important to you, it's important to me. Amen. That's how relationships go. So if, you, if it's something that, you know, I can do better, then it don't alter nothing, right? You know what I'm saying? Sure, okay. I'll watch that. I'm, I, th- thank you for bringing that to my attention. Cool. I don't care. Because it's this to you. But sometimes people don't bring nothing because I don't think, you know, you know. Because it's, if it's really offensive, you will come and talk to me. But if you're in between, but it's still gnawing at you, then you, eh. but come on, man, whatever it is. All right? You got it? Amen. And that's cool with me, man, because guess what? I didn't get up out of my bed. Lady didn't get up out of bed. The, the pastors didn't get up out of bed. I come up here and start offending folks. Amen. So, it's, so I, since I ain't trying to do that, I know I can sit there and say, I'm sorry, because it wasn't my intention. So I ain't got no problem with it. You got it? And nobody sits, I don't think anybody gets up and says, oh, I'm going to go, now nah, maybe, but I'm saying, I don't think anybody get up out and get out their bed and come and say, I'm going to just do something to make them. Sometimes personalities just don't. Have you ever been in a situation when you're growing up, and you just didn't like somebody because you just didn't like them? There ain't no reason, you just don't like them. Oh, y'all didn't do that, I mean, like, it's just something, you just, just didn't like them. What I do? I don't know. I just don't like you. <laughs> you, know what I'm Y'all, you ain't never had something like that. I mean, you just don't. Yeah, right? I just don't feel right. You know what I like, ah. Right? And that's wrong. But, I, you know, I get it. You know, some, some personality clashes, like, 
these voices get on your nerves. Like, oh, I don't like the way they talk. You know, I mean, just everything. It's, uh, oh, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Right? I mean, so we got to calm those kind of inconsequences down, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we all have them, man. There, we, so we just got to work those things out and make sure that uh, we can tolerate one another, okay? Even our voices. You know, they voice that, oh, God. <laughs> and they always got to talk, too, like, oh. <laughs> the voice is going to be a giggle. <laughs> you got to do it, man. You just got to love on them, man. Like, okay, cool, cool. Love handles all voices. I mean, it's love. <laughs> if the other person listens and confesses, you have won that person. But if they don't, right, the next one is a public meeting. Now you ex- take it out to the side of yourself because these people don't, they don't want to listen to you, right? So now you get to, it says in uh, 16, he says, um, but if you are unsuccessful, take one or two others with you and go back again so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. Now you're putting it down saying, okay, listen, this is what's going on. All right, this gets ca- kind of messed up, right? So now it becomes public, but it's only between these two or three people. Right. Stay in contain, right? The next one is a pastoral meeting. And this don't mean me, it's any pastor, all right? You have the right to take it to the pastor now, all right? And what does it say? If a person still refuses to listen and take your case to the church, then if she, he or she won't accept the church's decision, keep that person as a pagan or a corrupt tax collector. That's called spiritual authority. Verse 18, I tell you the truth, whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you can permit on earth will be permitted in, in heaven. So th- God has given the church certain authority, certain power, and judgment in relationships on church, in, in the church. Yes. If you go through this process. Okay, because God is concerned about his body being yeah. together and unified in peace. Yeah. Okay, if a person just refuses to want to be in peace, God says, okay, okay, do you, do you want, it's like this, do you want cancer to stay in your body? What you do with cancer? You cut it out. You got it? Some people can be, the Bible says, cankerous in the body. They spreading it, divisive, groups here, groups there, groups there. And, and, and pastors are so scared they're going to lose a member. Listen, if people leave because of one person, you was not pastoring them people, that person will. That's all you, all you do is find out who started pastoring the church. That's all you find out. So if they take that group and leave, they, they, that's the pastor. So don't be, I ain't afraid of that. Okay, take the church and go. Because you wasn't with me no way. But I'm going to keep God's body healthy. Amen. All right? So we don't, need all the, uh, we don't need all that. You got it? We just follow the word. You got it? You got it? It's all good. Last one is, don't count offenses, but be re- reconciled. The only way we'll get back together after our sins is, don't count them against you. Just like God did. What does it say? Let's read together. For God was in Christ doing what? How did he reconcile the world to himself? No longer counting people's sins against them. How are we going to get back together? You can't count the thing against me no more. That's the only way. We can't, we can't reconcile if you can say, yeah, and, and, if, if I come back to you in a relationship, and you still reminding me of what I did. No, we're not reconciled. You can't count that against me. That's the only way we're going to get reconciled. You got it? And he gave us this wonderful message, the ministry of what? Reconciliation. So everybody has a ministry of reconciliation in our church. So I don't know how we, can, we don't use that ministry to, to use it to reconcile ourselves with people. You got it? And the first thing I do is anytime me and me fall out about something, we don't get back together until we count that not against each other. Let it go. You got it? You got it? Come on, talk back to me. You got it? Last one. Let's see. Now, what? God was in Christ. That's inspiration. Then there's why. Reconcile the world to itself. Then the application is no longer count people's sins against them. Now, the takeaway to this is this. Reconciliation happens, listen to this very closely, when you no longer count a person's offense against them. The relationship is what? Restored. Now, this is how it's going to be restored. The relationship is restored by being broken down and rebuilt into another. You don't go back to the same relationship. That's the one broke down. Right. 
So people trying to reconcile, and they, get, they, they create the same thing, and they do it over again. Right. You ever see somebody get together, and then break up again, break up again? So you're creating the same relationship. It's broke down. It's time for growth. So now when you restore it, you make it into another. It's growth now. Over 38 years, me and my wife, we have grown. Break down, can't go back to this. Now we're reformed. Now I understand. I can't, I can't call you stupid. I, got, I got, can't say that no more. Right. You know, I can't do this. I can't do that. Now we're making it into another. Amen. What we're doing is saying, I'm sorry I called you stupid. And then we say, okay, okay. And then you get here and then you still say, I'm stupid again. You got the same relationship. So it's broken down. You restore it by what? Making it into another. You make it into another. Husband and wife, you, you broke out, you broke down. You can't go back to that relationship. It's dead. You ought to have a funeral for it. This was I. We were married from this to this. It's now dead. And now we're getting ready to start this one. Oh, no, you got to kill it. Because if you don't kill it, you're going to get back in the same situation. So you got to say, it's dead. Have a ceremony. Call me over. I said, yes. It's all over. It was good. I bring flowers. It's dead. And then when I see you again, you're like, hey, hey. You see? So when you make it into another, you don't bring that, that dead relationship up. Tell me, you, no longer can you say, well, two months ago you were saying, no, that's, that's dead. Today we're here. You make it into another. What's our takeaway? How to handle conflict. Never take revenge. Use biblical conflict resolution and do not count offenses, but be reconciled. Three steps of conflict resolution, private meetings, public meetings, and pastoral meetings. Next week, I want everybody here to have fun because we're going to talk about pastor and people relationship. Did you receive the word this morning? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the series. God, we thank you for making us a godly relationship. God, we thank you for teaching us how to come together and connect with one another. We love you so much, God. Now, if there's anybody on the sound of my voice who are in some, you know, have some relational issues, you know, don't leave here, people. Come down here and get prayed for. You know, it's all right, you know. And uh, if you want to know how to be a Christ follower, come on down. We invite you to come on down. If you have some, some physical issues and um, sicknesses in your body, we're going to pray that thing off out of you, right? And then again, we talked about the relational issues today. So come on, come on down. We, we'll pray for your relational issues. Whatever in general that you have, we want to pray for that. So if you look at the back of your seat, we're excited because now we're going to put communion there. So next week, you be prepared, and your communion will be in your behind your thing, okay? Amen? Amen. God bless you. We thank you so much. If you're a guest this morning, we would love to see you. Lady G, happy 60th birthday again. Amen. Oh, oh. And we have, we have some cupcakes for, for, for those who want to celebrate with my